Hey up guys, usual thing, if you can hear me okay, let me know please, if you can see me okay, please let me know, and uh, and say hi, say hello, um, it's been a few days since I did a live stream, so let's get back amongst it, uh, Claire, how are you doing, saying hello, Craig uh, Chris, afternoon all, how are you doing Chris, how's the training going, uh, Mika saying hello all, saying hello to everybody, not just me, um, Uh, tonight's tonight's live stream. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, basically it's it's very much about about kind of answering your questions. If you've got any, if there's anything sort of fitness food related that you want me to um, talk about, then I'm happy to do that. What I'm also planning on doing is critiquing uh, some of the meals on um, some of the meals and that on on Instagram. You know, people post their meals all the time and they use you know, some of the popular weight loss uh, programs as a hashtag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some of those meals, some of those pictures, and then just critique it. And the idea behind that is that by me critiquing it on the screen, you'll be able to watch it and get some nutrition tips on your own meals. And and But also um, learn, learn, you know, my kind of way of thinking when it comes to like putting your food together. Uh, so it usually goes quite well. Um, quite interested to see, see how it goes. A few people coming on now. So Donna saying, hi, Craig. Hi, Donna. How are you doing? Uh, Claire saying, yep, can see and hear you fine. Good. Thank you. Uh, Monica said, hello. And Eva, as always, is giving me a good evening. Uh, Chris, you give me a little angry face with your training. Does that mean your, your knees playing up a little bit or how, how are you doing? I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes, let everybody sort of get in, get settled down, and then and then we'll go for it. So I'm not, I don't know how many people to expect. This has been, it's been like I said, a few days before I, I did a last uh, a live stream. Um, so we'll kind of we'll see how it goes. Like I said, if you've got if you've got questions. If you've got, uh, oh, I'm interested, by the way, if anybody watching this on Instagram, if so, um, let me know. Um, I'm just going to put this back up because I wasn't sure on that. Uh, Chris saying, <laughs> sorry, pushed by mistake. No worries. Uh, I just, I, I didn't know whether he was like angry at your efforts or angry at this, this live stream or what, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, Right, so like I said, um, if you've got questions or points or anything like that, then stick them in the uh, stick them in the in the comments. Um, if you are on Instagram, please give me give me a thumbs up or 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 comment. I never really know whether Instagram is working. You know, I just I don't know. I just I don't really like it. That's why I'm not really on there much. Uh, Chris is saying training going well. Good for you, mate. Uh, if you don't know, Chris just had a, a knee replacement. So well, not just, but while ago um had a bit of a ups and downs in, in his in his rehab and recovery so it's good that he's um he's up and training again so well done mate okay let's uh let's kind of let's get into some of these these meals and that so i'm going to change change this and then add uh add this okay so i've done so you should be able to see it now. I've done, I've, I've, um, I bring my face up as well. So I just did a little search for hashtag, like a, a, a popular, uh, weight loss program. And, um, and, and this is the first, the first picture that's kind of come up and I'm going to cycle through a few and then just sort of critique them because I find it, you know, a lot of people say to me, what should I eat? What am I allowed to eat? What am I not allowed to eat? You know, and it's, it's like they want to completely just take out the cassette Remember those good old days of having a cassette? I'm going to take the cassette out and then just replace a healthy eating cassette that's just programmed to get them weight loss or or achieve whatever goals they've got. And and that's actually really hard. If you think about it, like that may, that needs that makes a big change in so many different factors. And um, it's it's hard. It's hard to do that. What what is easier is to take what you're currently eating. And then just bit by bit, just small improvements, just small improvements, and eventually, you know, it's um, it's gonna it's gonna 
work out really well. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to try and increase the size of that because you can really see the writing and stuff. So, uh, right. So that's a bit bigger, bit, bit, bit better. Okay. So, uh, here we go. This here's the first meal that we're going to kind of duck into again. Remember, uh, post your comments in that below. So, so here it is. We've got, um, I don't really know what it is. Like some kind of cheesy pasta broccoli thing. So um, you might, I mean, remember what I always say is that, you know, everyone's at a different place in the, in the, in the weight loss um, journey. And for some people, you know, this is just a massive change from a bloody Domino's or a KFC or whatever. And therefore it is good. It is good. But what would be the next steps to improve it. Okay. So first of all, you know, um, if anybody's been doing the, the 30 day sugar free challenge, then we were spoke a lot about this kind of stuff before. So straight away, you know, we, we've got the pasta now, you know, not only is pasta what we call glycemic, it's going to, it's going to raise insulin level. Um, it's also, you know, there, there are, there are, so there are other health implications in regards to, you know, grains, gut, the fact that we shouldn't really be eating grains, we've got to process it to be able to consume it, you know, and whether it's nutritionally any good. So um, my first thing I would do here is I would look to just increase more vegetables, you know. I think it's bang on, you know, re really good, but just get rid of the pasta. We, we have this belief, and I had it for a long time as well, where every meal needs to have some kind of starchy carbohydrate in there. And we don't feel like we've got a meal unless we bulk it out with some kind of starchy carbohydrate. So potatoes, rice, pasta, and you know, and that comes from um, the government doing a big push on what we call the eat well plate and the food triangle, where it's saying that the staple of our diet should be cereals and starchy carbohydrates, because that's what the country can produce lots of. All right. So, you know, a little bit of education there where it's, it should be, you know, we think, and I think in this particular slimming group, uh, community, I think they call them hex bees where, um, you know, it's like healthy, healthy extra B and it's like breads and rice and grains and, and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I, first thing I'd do is I would, I would look to cut out the pasta and just have more veg, just get more veg on there. Um, and then in the writing, it says, uh, cook some pasta, mix all this together, one teaspoon of reduced fat cream cheese. Okay, reduced fat. So whenever you see reduced fat or low fat or light, whether it's L-I-T-E or L-I-G-H-T, then, you know, you should be thinking high sugar because we've got to get our taste from somewhere. So if we're having a low fat cheese, actually, it's more like a high sugar cheese. Okay, and, and we know because of the 30 day program and all that kind of stuff, that, that, that sugar is really the enemy. So another thing that I would do here, it would look to get like, you know, if you can add some cheese, just get a full fat, we've got a full fat cheese in there, you know, um, it is only one tablespoon. So it's not exactly going to, you know, create a lot of, a lot of problems, but it is, you know, a little twist on the dial just to make it a little bit better and better. Um, reduced fat pesto. Okay, so there's not, you know, obviously one tablespoon of pesto. It's not massive, but same again. If we are, if we are, um, um, if we are having reduced fat, we're having elevated sugar. You know, just remember that. So now, so they've got reduced fat cheese, reduced fat pesto, and and then um, this person's gone for 15 grams of of cheddar. Um, stick under the grill. That's it. Okay. So, so they're the main things I would do. I was literally just double, if not triple the, uh, the vegetables, you'd be able to have a much bigger plate full of food then because you've got the vegetables and also, you know, swap out the, the pasta and then just a full fat variation. And that's, you know, that's all I pretty much suggest you do with this. Um, uh, Josh is saying, what about pulses, Craig, lentils, beans, etc.? Would that work? Yeah, you can ask some of them and they're nutritionally better, but there are, you know, it depends where you are again on the, on the journey, Josh, because, you know, there are, there are some, there are other health problems in relation to pulses, lentils, beans, and all that kind of stuff. You know, we, with there, there, there are types of protein in those foods. We, we just don't, we just don't digest unless we really feck about with them. Okay. So, you know, it can cause all sorts of problems like gut irritation, uh, inflammation around the body. Now, it, it might just be, you know, if you're somebody who's eating a lot of pasta and you could actually transition quite easily onto pulses, lentils, beans, go for it because that's a great next step. 
And then as time goes on and you want to improve your health and it no longer becomes about perhaps controlling weight, you might want to start pulling some of them out. One of the things that you can do with pulses, lentils, beans is just, you know, soak them overnight. Um, it will help break down the food and you can you can process it a little bit better. So hopefully that's answered your question. Donna saying, I always thought I needed carbs to fill up, but haven't had any for nearly two weeks now. Not really missing them. No, Donna, you are eating carbs. This is this is like the the common misconception that, you know, a carbohydrate is is rice, pasta, potatoes, bananas, you know, that chips, that kind of stuff. This broccoli, these tomatoes, they, these are carbohydrates. It's just they're a much better form of carbohydrate. Um, so you are eating carbs. And, and uh, with our, what we call SAD, which is, you know, standard American diet, but, you know, the, the Brits are, are, are pretty close to a standard American diet. Um, we are, we, it is very, very carb heavy, very carb heavy, you know. And uh, so, you know, we just need to kind of, make better choices in where the carbohydrates come from. Uh, Monica said, I couldn't eat that. No, I, it doesn't really float my boat. What is it for you, Monica? What's uh, what's kind of turning you off that? Josh saying, thanks. Cool. All right. So we'll, we'll move on. We'll do another one. Um, what we got here. Someone's amazing results. Good effort. Uh, okay. What we got here. So, all right, here we go. So I don't know what they... There is no there is no caption, but we'll try and work out what these what these things are. Okay, so we've got a big yeah, well, not a big, but we've got a portion of rice. Now, for some people, they might look at that and go think think, well, it just there's not a lot of rice. You know, if you are somebody who eats a lot of rice, a lot of pasta, a lot of chips, or whatever, okay, this is about a fist, you know, a bit about a fist of, of starchy carbohydrates. And that that's a good first step if you're eating lots of those kind of foods. Now, eventually we want to kind of strip them out, you know, and get rid of them. Now I can't work out what these are. I don't know what this is, like roast peppers or something like that. Um, I don't really know. Um, and then obviously we've got a carrot RPs, peas, or maybe this is some kind of chicken or something. I don't, I don't, oh, barbecue chicken. There you go. So it's barbecue chicken. So what I would do here is I would look to replace the, the rice. First step would be like a wild um, whole grain rice. Uh, then I would look to sort of cut the rice out and just increase the amount of, um, of vegetables. And, and then I'd look at the quality of these vegetables, you know, these pre-cut, probably frozen carrots, you know, although some, you know, a lot of frozen, especially peas, actually, a lot of uh, veg will retain more nutrients in, in a fro when they're frozen really quickly haven't been picked. But these just like pretty, pretty poor quality. So I'd look to... I'd look to kind of just improve the quality of their veg, you know, like peas and carrots. Yeah. A little bit crap, you know, some green leafy veg, broccoli, you know, just, just to improve the quality to that veg. And then look at the, um, the barbecue sauce. Um, you know, if it's something that's quite high, if it's like a shop bought tinned or jar of barbecue sauce, then I would look in, look, be looking for kind of any hidden sugars. And then eventually, you know, look to make, you can actually make a really nice paleo or primal, barbecue sauce and, um, you know, and cut out those sugars there. So that's quite an easy one to, to sort out. What do you think to that? Monica's saying, don't like how it looks. No, I didn't. I didn't. It looks like a big, the other one looked like a, a plate of sick. But um, some will say to have at least one third of your plate as veg. Get your point about up in veg, but there are, there are people who even struggle with that much veg. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, there is. Um, a third of your plate as veg suggests i mean you know what what's the other two thirds then so protein and fats i mean it, it's just you know it's just like a little bit of a, a bit of a weird one and then how big is your plate you know plates vary in size so um f you know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a broad statement isn't it i suppose so um but good thanks thanks for the uh thanks for the information uh, right, let's let's move on to another one. It looks like I'm trying. Right, here we go. Well, this is another one that looks uh, Monica. This is not for you, is it? Uh, I can guess that you're you're not gonna you're not gonna be big on this one because how it looks. Okay, so uh, bacon mushroom and onion pesto pasta, yum. Okay, so and uh, and for this person, I'm I'm sure it is. So with, with this, what would I do? Well, obviously, you know we've. This is just a big plate of pasta. And obviously, although it's got pasta, bacon, and mushroom, and all that kind of stuff, 
the ratio of carbohydrates to everything else is just is just kind of way off. Let me let me um, uh, let's stop talking through it and just just do it because I'll give you a commentary of what I'm trying to do and it'll, it'll just look stupid. So let me <laughs> let me uh, bring it up. Right, so I've got my my little board here. So um, what we've got with this meal here is. If we imagine this is this is the whole of our plate, all of our nutrition, and then we've got three main food groups in carbohydrates, fats, um, and proteins. Okay, so in this plate here, the carbohydrates are just way off. Okay, Th this is just like a broad brush, and and the protein and fats is just like minimal. You know, so what is going on in the body here? Now, don't get me wrong. You know, this person could be eating a damn sight a lot worse. We know that. Um, but what what I try and encourage people to do is have a balanced diet, a balanced meal every time they eat. Okay, so, um, you know, we we want our our ratios to be uh, to be a bit more a bit more even. I would say almost like the Mercedes badge. You know, where you've got your carbohydrates, especially if you're trying to manage weight, protein, and then fats. Some people get scared having this many fats. Probably a poor drawing, but, um, you know, in which case you can reduce them. But, you know, I think snacks especially should focus on, on you know, should be built around protein. Whereas if we go back to this meal here, um, it, it's, it's like it's like the... Um, the meal has been built around starchy carbohydrates. Does everyone everyone kind of everyone kind of see that and then see what I'm kind of saying there? Um, you know, so we can we can how would we change this? Start off by reducing the amount of pasta, throwing some of the veg in like the other person had, you know, eventually working the, the pasta out. Um, as for like the bacon, mushroom, onion, you know, up the bacon, get more, more bacon in there, more, more protein in there. And um you know, I don't really know about what, what's in the pasta and all that kind of stuff, but you know, that's kind of what I would be looking at doing with that. Uh, so Monica saying no. Um, Claire saying huge portion of pasta. Yeah, it is. Uh, Eva saying it's there. You can eat as much pasta as you want as long as one third of your plate is veg. Yeah, and 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 this is this is the problem, you know, because not only is the how glycemic a food is, but there's the glycemic load and which is, you know, we can have, you know, so much pasta that we are just, we are just smashing hell about out of our, um, our, in, you know, our, our insulin response in, in our body. Um, you know, and when people first start slimming world or, or whatever, you know, weight loss program, it's usually more about what they're not eating at first than what they actually are eating. You know, so, uh, you know, it'd be quite interesting to see what, what this person has, has switched from. Uh, Monica's saying, yep, and Steve Brown's looks like a starter to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's move on, see what else we got. Um, so I haven't, I haven't looked at these, by the way, but, uh, but um, here we go. So... I don't really know what these are. Uh, low fat again on the um, on the packet. I don't even see that low fat. We've got uh, mother sweets, ninety nine calories in here, which is telling me you know there's there's something there's something missing in there. It's more chemicals probably than anything else. Skinny crunch. Um, yeah. So anyway, th th this the th the issue that I've got here is I know, I know it's probably all the you know, but but listen to this these goodies you know so when you're when you're looking to change your relationship with food like I've, I've said in the past a lot of it boils down to the language you use you know it's a real indication of your beliefs these goodies okay so you seem as like oh the goodies and the treats you know what i mean and i'm going to treat myself to an all natural slim um multigrain pop whatever that is and uh, you know in a crispy delight you still using food as like a carrot or a stick either to you know to reward yourself like you're a dog or bloody batter yourself because you know you're disappointing yourself and a little bit shamed or whatever you know these goodies um a healthy sweet snack you know i do 
you've really got to question the definition of healthy on that one because, um, you know, is it really, we won't know until we kind of look at the, uh, the ingredients on that. I'm sure if you're on a diet or something like that, then it tastes great and you feel like you're still having a little bit of a treat and stuff, but, um, you know, just not, you, you, I think you kind of get my, uh, you kind of get my gist on that one. Uh, Claire, a portion of pasta size would send my blood sugars through the roof. Exactly, yeah. You know, and Claire's somebody that monitors her blood sugar. She kind of knows, you know, she's tracked this kind of thing. Um, Claire, what would happen if you add some of these skinny crunch or all this kind of stuff? Um, all right, we'll move on from those. Uh, chicken rub. I don't know what this is. Can't wait to try some recipes out later. Uh, some of these rubs are really good, actually. You know, I, I really like this, um, the Patak ones uh, I use quite often, you know, just like a tablespoon of um, a tablespoon of like a Patak curry paste or uh, a Thai green curry paste. You know, I look out for like refined sugars or hidden sugars in there, but actually it's a real quick and easy way. I, I don't like cooking as, as some people, you know, I'm sure some people are like that as well. And, um, you know, I... Uh, if I can make it easy in any way and, and still remain, still maintain the taste, then, then I'll kind of go for that. So this could be quite, quite good. Um, yeah. Wonderful marketing, skinny bliss, uh, slim bliss, skinny, you know, it's just like the words that it's just like nectar to someone trying to, you know, just battling to lose weight. And it's like, Oh, you know, but the problem is that we have a, a tendency and, and, and it's been, it's been proven that, if we have like um, what we think is like a much healthier food, we will tend to have a bigger portion, you know, and I wonder how many, you know, full boxes of skinny, skinny things uh, are, are munched in a, in a day. Um, okay. Let's, let's move along. Isn't alone fiber one, uh, 90 calories in here. Um, uh, good source of fiber. You know, the, the, the thing is with the, the hex B stuff. So it's basically healthy extra. And then it's like to get, to increase your fiber from what I understand. Um, and in the slimming world sort of, I guess slimming world, I'm not, this is not bashing slimming world because people get some great results from it. Um, I'm just using this as like, um, as like a, a, a frame for what we're talking about here, but they talk about, you know, you've got to include bread, rice, pasta to make sure you get enough fiber, but there's more than enough fiber in the vegetables. As long as you're eating plenty of vegetables, in fact, a better source of fiber. And it also says that you need more calcium and all this kind of stuff. And therefore you need to hexa uh, hex a is like dairy and that kind of stuff to make sure you get in the right amount of calcium. Well, there's a ton of calcium in broccoli and other like cruciferous veg. So, you know, it's, it's one of those me, me, those misleading things, you know, who, who's telling us that milk is full of, of, of calcium, the freaking dairy companies that are trying to sell milk, you know, um, just like special K is a great source of bloody whatever. Um, so yeah, just be, just have a be curious about who's given you an information. All right. So creamy bolognese taken from the new pinch of non book, uh, done in slow cooker. So, um, same again with this. So we've got, obviously we, we've got, well, this has been labeled as sin free. So hashtag sin free. Um, I don't really understand the sin system that much. Um, but for me, you know, we've obviously got like spaghetti on the bottom and then I don't know what kind of cheese this is. Um, so, you know, for, for me, I'd want to be, and this is typical what I'm saying about, you know, starch your carbohydrates. A, ga a great first step is to go from what is a plate of carbohydrates in, in, in the spaghetti to just one fist, you know, just, just one fist of, um, of, of carbohydrates can, can make a, a real difference, can really change the ratio of um, of your of the food that you're eating you know so for this first step reduce the amount of spaghetti maybe even look to changing it to like a courgette or a cauliflower rice or something that's going to bring a lot more vitamins and minerals and fiber than just plain white crappy uh, spaghetti okay um or you can have what, what else have i seen uh like butternut squash spaghetti you know th that's kind of how i'd be looking at looking at changing this monica's saying more pasta oh no <laughs> yeah i know 
I know this is the thing that, that got me with Slimming World was, you know, a friend of mine would, would turn up with a big box of pos pasta and he's like, yeah, sin free and do whatever I want. And I'm like, only, only to a level. At some point, your weight is going to plateau because it's no longer about what you're doing without. Now it's about what you're doing with. And then the other thing is like, how healthy is it? It's one thing to lose weight, but actually, you know, what other messages are being sent in the body and, and, you know, you're going to finish swimming world com completely insulin resistant, you know, or on the verge of being insulin resistant, maybe even like diabetic if you do it for years and years, just because of what's going on and um, with the messages sent from this food. Uh, Claire said again, too big a portion of pasta in my opinion. Yeah. hundred percent guys. How, how is that? Are you getting, are you getting useful stuff from this? Um, has anybody got any questions so far? Anything that they want me to uh, to go through? Um, what else we got? Oh, this is just like a do's and don'ts for fat loss. Keep going. Keep joining. Yeah, I don't see any of my girls on there. Any of your girls? So yeah. let me uh, <laughs> let me just bring up the. Uh, Where's there? Ava's there. Good girl. Yeah. Come on the screen oh, then, so they can hello. see you, and then you have to. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Who here. else? Talking here. Oh, sorry. I have to talk in here. Mm, just looking. See who's there. Hello, everybody. Steve Price. He's hanging on in there. When's he going to come and see us? Yeah, as soon as we get <laughs> un unlocked. <laughs> when we get locked up. Yeah, no, that's wrong, exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. All right. Uh, they're saying hi. Claire's saying hi. Monica's saying hi, Paula. Um, all right, let's get back to it. Uh, Mika's saying hello. Okay, so uh, here's the next one. A uh, little bit zoomed in, so we can't can't really see too much, but let me have a look at it. Egg fried rice, sweet chili, and garlic for tea. Okay, so... Um, oh, shoot. What have I done? What have I done? Closed it down. Let's bring it back up. Right, okay, so hopefully you can see it there. Uh my, my, you know, you, you tell me, you, you tell me what, how are we, how are we going to improve this? So we've got, we've got rice. What, what, do, what's your take on sort of egg fried rice and then, um, the sweet chili sauce, like what would be the, the simple, easy steps to, to kind of, to start to improve this meal for as much as you know, um, doesn't actually say what this what the meat is it looks like chicken <laughs> mika said i would not eat any of it no as a as a chef you'd probably be pretty disgusted with this uh eva's saying hello paula um claire's saying sauce will be sugary yeah you, no you know any, if it's a sweet chili sauce then we'd be obviously looking at that you know can we can we change the sauce can we make sure that it's not going to hidden or refined sugars in there um monica's saying swap to brown rice be a great first move um wild rice is another one or cauliflower rice or you know something like that or just just a lot of veg you know just get a lot of of other veg in there lisa's saying get rid of the rice the cauliflower rice yep good one um chris cauliflower rice amazing you guys can do this yourself okay next one we got uh here we go so um two stins for stuffing uh so here we go i, I don't know what these is that like pickled onions in the middle of the food i don't, I don't know uh so we've got like a roast dinner um I'm trying to see, it looks like, I don't know if that's beetroot or red. I think that's beetroot on the side. I don't know if that's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so what's your take on this? How, how are we going to clear this up? Um, there are some carrot and veg hiding under that bit of meat there. Um, from the previous one, Claire's saying have stir fried veggies instead. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Chris is saying more veg. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So we've got some big bits of starch carbohydrates here, potatoes, one, two, three, four, five roast potatoes. Um, you know, 
we, we, we could probably just get rid of them completely. I know everybody loves a good, a good, uh, no, it's not cranberry sauce. It's not cranberry sauce, uh, Kathy. It's, um, it's beetroot. It, it's not, it's not cabbage. I'm sort of zooming in on the picture and, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not cabbage. Um, it's like beetroot. <clears throat> which is weird. Maybe she's got like a bit of a beetroot thing going on. Uh, so what did we say? Where do we get to? Um, Chris say more veg. Chris, uh, Eva saying cranberries. No, no. Kathy saying that. Uh, again, I would struggle here. Yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't look very advertising. But but thing is, Mika, you know, and, and, and I, I remember, I remember when I was personal training, I used to do, I used to run like, um, CrossFit sessions in a local gym. And I had a couple of people, that, well, I had people that come up regularly. And there was one lady that used to come all the time and, and um, she actually used to train really hard. But we got on to, we got on to the subject of uh, of food after one of the sessions. And um, and we was chatting away and I was giving a, bit, a few bits of advice and all this. And this this woman said, oh, you'll, you'll, you'll never sort my food out. I thought, right, well, anyone who starts with a statement like that, you, you kind of, you pissing in the wind, aren't you? Um, but I thought, okay, let, let's, let's go for it. And I said, why is that? And she went, well, I only like kids' food. And I went, well, what's kids' food? And she said, well, you know, pizza, pasta, nuggets, chips, that kind of stuff. And I was like, I was blown away because I never considered that some people, first of all, believe that there is an adult's food and a kid's food. Um, when I was growing up, it, I, I got the same as my mom. You know, there's no way she was going to do like two two different meals. Barking up, and then, uh, but then the other thing was that when these humans were developing the most, that they should have beige food of nuggets, chips, pizza, and all this kind of stuff. And I was just I was blown away with that. So you know, for 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 some people like this, this would be like a real you know a, a real quality meal in, in, in their opinion. You know, some people are so used to eating like just beige food on a plate that this, you know, this, this would be like immense for them. Um, Lisa saying more veggies, ditch the tatties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Uh, could be, no, listen, Sam, it is definitely beetroot. It just, the, you know, the, the texture of it, if I'm zooming in here, uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not cabbage. Um, this anyway, I'm just getting fixated on this beetroot on a lunch. Steam the veg instead of roasting. That's a good idea. Yeah, D uh, change the way that you are you are creating the food. Um, so yeah, you know, and there's also something down. I don't know if this is like mashed carrot or mashed. Uh, I think it's mashed carrot. You know, uh, this again is going to be quite glycemic. So we add this to the potatoes and then even onions. And, you know, and beets, you know, all, all of this could be quite um, glycemic. So, you know, I, I look at certainly getting rid of the tatties, looking to reduce this amount of sort of mashed food. Um, what, what about the chicken? So we've got, we've got like, what's well, obviously a bit of chicken thigh, chicken breast on here. Let me put chicken thigh, I think, you know, what, what would you kind of do to that? Um, had Swede mashed the other day. It was quite nice. Yeah, it is, it is nice. It is it is nice, certainly better than mashed mashed spuds. Uh, we're gonna move on. Tell, tell me what you kind of what your thoughts are on that. Uh right, Italian meatballs, homemade pork and beef Italian meatballs. So we don't know what's going with this or whatever. I've no idea what's in the sauce. Um looks very, very uh rich in tomatoes. I can't really see, I can't see the recipe or anything like that, but, um, so we're going to move on. Uh, oh no, in fact, you know, let, let's talk about what, what, what could you put this with? Um, what would you have, what would you have with that? Okay, next one then. Found these in home bargains, only three sins using the sin estimator. The kinder version is six sins. Um, so eight bars, can't see the weights here. 63 calories per bar, is it? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, there's no quantities there. Um, 
What's your thoughts on them? Mika saying it's not beige. What? What's not beige? Uh, clay rice, yeah, good. Probably high in sugar if you're using tomato puree. Yeah, it could be, you know, hidden sugars in, in tomato puree. Um, what would they really only have? What, would they really only? Yeah, exactly, exactly that. You know, it's just like if we are already in a restrictive mode, you know, every time you see wet cement, wet paint, what do you want to do? You know, there's a sign saying, Keep off the grass. What, what do you want to do? You want to write your name in the cement. You want to bloody touch the wet paint and walk on the grass. And whenever we're sort of thinking, oh, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat chocolate, don't eat this, you know, the, the minute we get something that's like, oh, this is only like one sin, you know, we, we're trying to game it. We're trying to game the point system. Um, but actually, you know, it doesn't really take into account what's happening in the body there. And, you know, one, really, you know, I don't know. Um, pure sugar, those bars, uh, dark chocolate only 85 to 90%. Yeah, good. That's a good one, Chris. Obviously, the higher the the, the percentage of, of 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 cocoa, the less likely you are you're gonna binge on it because it'll be a little bit too bitter and uh and nutritionally better, you know. There's obviously gonna be less refined sugar in there as well. So um that's good. Um what are we on? Okay, so we're coming up to 40 minutes now. So we're gonna we'll we'll ax that if you if you have found it to be of any benefit, then then let me know. Um, and if anybody's got any other questions now that's come up from this or about their training, um, food or anything, then we'll just have we'll have up to twenty minutes. If it's not if if you know people haven't got any questions, then we'll we'll call it a day. Um, I'm interested to know what what you guys are having for for dinner. Let us know what you got planned, Mika. I'm quite interested in what you're what you're making. Although you did tell me you you eat at work, you tend to eat at work. So uh, I'm always a little bit jealous of your food. It just looks looks amazing. And you, Claire, you've been banging out some um, some great meals as well. Sam's so saying you don't want to know. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, I do want to know now. I do want to know. Uh, Lisa said I had an omelette with some veggies in it. Yeah, good for you. We had um, we have an omelette most days, Paula and I. Uh, you know, uh, to this morning we had salmon fillet with some poached eggs, really nice, and some avocado. Uh, Chris is having steamed veg and salmon. Good for you, Chris. Well done, mate. That'll be that'll um, the fish oils will definitely help with the the healing of the neat. Uh, corona, no work. So does that mean you're having? A pint of Corona and you're not going to work? <laughs> or is it because of Corona you're not going to work? Baked camembert with keto bread. Like it. We had we had baked camembert the other day with some uh, carrot sticks. It's quite a really nice snack. And and the thing for me is like um I don't I don't know if anybody's done the the love language quiz. This sounds really irrelevant, but it is it is kind of relevant. Uh the love language quiz where uh, there's a book called the, I think it's called Love Languages or something like that, and it's it's basically it's like a it's like a couple's relationship book, and you basically do a quiz and it tells you how you like to receive love, um, not in that kind of way, but you know, so um, for me, and then it gives there's like five different love languages, and it'll it'll tell you which what you prefer, and I like to apply it to food and and lifestyle and and habits. So for example, Paula likes Paula's number one love language is words of um words of kindness or something like that she likes being told she looks beautiful she likes being told she's doing really well you know she loves it so if i want to get on her level then i've just got to, you know i've got to say oh you look beautiful today or whatever okay and um but for me my number one love language is um experience quality time, quality time, you know? So if I can eat and have, and make it an event, like a quality time, then that's, that's right up my strata. Okay. So like the idea of having a baked camembert with some carrot sticks and kind of sitting close together and, and, and sort of nibbling away and watching a bit of telly or whatever that is, or in front of the fire, that's just brilliant for me, you know? So I don't need to find, pleasure necessarily in the food because 
the experience. I love the experience, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm just interested if anyone's done that and what their number one love language is. Uh, do you take the fiber content from the sugar content? Yes, Donna, Donna. So if you've got a food which is, as an example, 10 grams of sugars and there's four grams of fiber, deduct the fiber from the food and then that will give you the sugar content because we don't, we don't, we don't do anything with fiber. The reason why it's good for our digestive system, depending on what research you read, uh, is because it just passes through our gut, you know, and keeps everything moving. So, um, yeah, so you can deduct that from there. Um, Donna saying steak and veggies sounds amazing. Love a good steak. Sam saying, what good carbs can you have with dinner? Now, there's no good carbs or bad carbs, Sam. There is just the right context. Uh, the only things I know how to cook for dinner are carby things like pasta and potato. Yeah, well, I mean, you can cook other veg. So vegetables are carbohydrates. You know, other veg in exactly the same way as you would cook pasta and potato. You can you can boil them, you can steam them, you know, um, you can stir fry them. So it depends kind of what, what your what your what you're eating with it. Uh, uh, so, but to start off with, Sam, just to kind of put a little bit of a full stop after that is, you know, trying to avoid those starchy carbohydrates and go for, you know, much, much better variations of, of, um, of veg. Okay. So just a load more broccoli, a load more, I have a saying that if it's green, it'll keep your cancer clean, you know, and, and it, it really will look after you. So lots of green leafy veg, broccoli different um just, just get in the get in the veg aisle you know and just get other stuff other than like potatoes and rice and pasta uh kathy said i had dinner lunchtime salmon baked mushrooms and baby tomatoes and two baby potatoes good i like it uh claire said i'm finding i am now having five smaller meals during the day after the three larger ones um claire perhaps something for you to consider um, is is reducing the size of your your feeding window, you know. So uh, you know, try and have your last meal um, at a set point in the evening, maybe half six, seven o'clock, or whatever, and then go until kind of mid morning to lunchtime um, until you have your your eating window. So uh, that would. Might be a, a good step. What is the love language test called? Let me just dig it up. I think it's just called love love language test or something like that. Get your get your get your partner to do it as well. So um, I've just typed in love. There you go. The five love languages. Uh, just type in love language test free and uh, and do it. See see what you come back with. Sam saying thank you. Um, I can't, I can't post links into the Facebook group, but, uh, I can post it to the page. I don't know if, I don't know where you're watching this. Right. Sam, Sam, there you go. Sam saying acts of service. Yeah. So you like, you like to be, you know, for, for people to do nice things for you. You know what I mean? So, oh, you know, you sit there, I'll go and I'll make tea for you tonight and bring you a cup of tea and um, or a meal or something like that, you know? So, yeah, it's interesting. So, you know, if you can have, if you can sort of, knowing that, you know, how could you apply that to your, <laughs> to your training? Someone does the training for you, <laughs> that'd be good. Uh, you know, you got a bit, bit, bit creative with it, but um, I'm a massive believer that, you know, how can you truly change yourself if you don't if you don't know yourself? And there's a load of different tests that you can do to work out your personalities. And for example, you know, when we talk about motivation, some people are, are what we call towards motivated, okay, and other people are away from motivated. So some people might get might get motivated by seeing a picture of them, um, you know, in the future. And uh, and they're towards motivated, or it, they might be motivated by a picture of them when they were large, going, "I never want to be like that again." And they want to get as far away from that as they can, you know. And the people that are towards motivated, they want to get as close 
as they can. You know what I mean? But there's different types of motivation. This is why, you know, some people say stick a, stick a picture of when you was overweight on the fridge and, and that'll motivate you. And like for some people, it won't because they're not away from motivated. They're towards motivated. Um, so the interesting thing with that is that either whichever way you are, let's say you're away from motivated, then the further you get from the point where you needed to change, the less motivated you are. So you've got to constantly keep just creeping that, um, that little reminder of why you're doing this up. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Mika saying, okay, thanks. Facebook user say, my meals seem to be the same. Green leafy veg, meat and fish. Need ideas to switch it up. Almost scared of, but do you? Do you really need? Because remember that when you're eating well, like, like food is is pretty bland. It's pretty boring. It was never, it was never a means of celebration. It was never a means of of you know to pass time and and all that kind of stuff. Like you know, it was just literally we, we ate it for information and to fuel what we're actually doing. We've turned it into uh, a way of passing time and a way to add variety. So what I would be saying is, you know, look for other ways to find your pleasure, to find you know, ways to change your state, to make yourself happier, whether it's meditation, going for a walk, exercise, you know, whether it's reading a book, having a bath, whatever it is, you know, and I would be looking for that. Um, the more you, the more routine you've got in your food, the better. Now, not everybody wants to hear that. They really don't because like, oh, you know, but the idea of, but once you're, once you've got that routine, it makes, it means that, you can make choices in the future. It's like, okay, right, there's a birthday party coming up. Am I going? Yes. Right. Well, just for one night, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll eat, drink, do whatever I want to do, and then back on it tomorrow, back onto my normal routine. You know, that's a far better way of living than having all the things that you, you know, like thinking about all the things that you're restricting yourself from. Um, so, but having said that, there are a ton of different ways that you can spice up your food excuse the pun, but you can change the way you, you prepare it. Um, you can change the, the makeup of it. You can change, swap out vegetables and different food sources. Um, but, you know, literally when I was, when I first kind of got into like losing weight and, and sorting my, um, my, my dinner out, my food out, uh, I'd have an A and a B breakfast, an A and a B lunch, an A and a B dinner, and then A and a B snack. And I'd literally just you know, stick to what I knew was working for me. Um, Sam saying my partner makes dinner. <laughs> Funny old thing. I bet you love it. Uh, so I'm saying same. I enjoy salmon, turkey, steak, etc. But every now and then I'm desperate to switch it up with a new taste. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of get it, you know, but you can, you know, change the way that you cook it. So cook it in, get get like a good grass fed butter, cook it in the butter. Uh, look for these sauces that have got that are low in 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 sugar and, and sweetness and 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 swap it out like that. Um look, you know, learn how to put spices and and uh herbs together to in, in change and improve the taste. So loads of different ways that you can do it. One of the things I do is just I just use lime and lemon juice on, on a lot of stuff, salt and pepper, and that really changes it. Um, even switch it up once a month. Uh, Monica saying I'm very routine. My family call it boring. Yeah, they would because they want to be perhaps eating stuff that gives you a massive dopamine hit, you know, where food becomes pleasure. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's all right. But the, the, uh, the, the, the short term pleasure soon becomes long term pain. Um, so stick to your routine. That's good. Chris is saying it's called five long love language. Um, I need to tighten the screw, as I like to say. Take it to the next level. It's Greg, by the way. Oh, great, Greg. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, if you want to send pictures of of the meals you're eating, I can, you know, we can do it. I do. I'm going to do this live Q and A every Thursday. So, you know, if you if you people want to send pictures or their meal plans, then um, then I'm happy to kind of do a similar critique as we've done as we've done tonight. Um, Sam's, what's your take on pesto? Yeah, you know. The, the thing is with pesto, I mean, um, you're never going to like drink a gallon of it, you know? So it, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those marginal things in my opinion. Um, so 
I'd be looking at like looking at like the the pasta that's going with it, or you know, before I kind of look at look at pesto. Uh, the, the, it's a great way. Pesto is actually a really good way of of getting some good quality fats into the food you're eating. Um, you know, like we talked before about having a balanced meal every time you eat. And one of the ways that people struggle is to increase their fat, especially if they're having something, you know, like a salad or something like that. Now you can put some pesto on with, with a good quality olive oil and you're increasing the amount of fats that you're, that you're consuming, but also you are increasing the taste, you know, and, and, and that, that's, that's a good thing for anybody that's trying to, trying to stick to, um, or improve their eating. So yeah, knock yourself out with the old pesto, in my opinion. Um, Make your own, though. It's probably a good, uh, a good, a good thing to say. Uh, Mika saying thanks, Chris. Uh, that test is scarily accurate. What did you come back with, Lisa? I'm interested to to hear what you got. Um, yes, great, great idea. Spices, yeah, spices, you know, and and, and herbs and that, and and I think it's a bit of an art, really. Um, of of spicing food and and you know using all that kind of stuff to change the how it tastes um, but i think it's a, it's a good way to go you know because a lot of them obviously are not going to affect the makeup of the food change the the insulin that is you know and and for you greg you know they're not going to necessarily kick you out of of ketosis um so you know it'd be a, a good good move um i just experiment and search internet for ideas yeah pinterest is an absolute is, is brilliant for uh, recipes Donna saying I try new veg every week. Found fennel is so tasty. Yeah, I like fennel. I love fennel, but um, Paula doesn't really like it. She doesn't like pak choy either. But um, but I do. You know, I, I love I love stuff like that. Pak choy on a stir fry is amazing. Uh, Sophie, I use a lot of soy sauce and things, and just read the label: twenty three grams of sugar in a hundred milliliters. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of sugar. Um, yeah, a lot of sugar and salt and salt in soy sauce. So, uh, but you can get, you can get a reduced sugar, reduced salt, which would be perhaps be a good uh, next step. And then other than that, there is, there is a food which you'd have to, you probably have to get on Amazon or, or some other kind of health supplier called, um, I keep getting phone calls, uh, amino. Let's have a look. Some aminos. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'm just Googling it now. Uh, not amino acids. <laughs> uh, coconut amino. Yeah, coconut amino sauce. Uh, just looking now, there's a few places you can get it. I think you can get it on, um, I think you can get it on, on Amazon, you get Holland and Barrett. Um, and it's just an alternative to soy sauce, you know, nutritionally a bit better. So, uh, there's a little, something else you could swap it out for breakfast before or after training in the morning. Really it, um, it boils down to you, Chris, uh, obviously it's common knowledge that um, obviously you're in a fasted state when you you first wake up. Therefore, if you can train um, in that fasted state, then you could perhaps tap into your fat stores as energy. Um, the problem with that is me, especially, is I don't train very well first thing in the morning. You know, I really struggle. It takes me a bit of time to come around. You know, and I'm I perform much better if I've had, had a little bit something to eat before I exercise first. You know, in the in the morning. So, personal choice, really, Chris. And there's enough obstacles and pressures on people without saying you must do this, you must do that. So whatever works for you. You know, I'd have a light meal before or a meal afterwards or breakfast afterwards, and and take it from there. Really, uh, is my sort of take on that. Kathy saying yes. I've been going through a cookery book that I received for Christmas for new ideas. What have you, what have you found, Kath? Pesto on fish is delish. Sam is a poet. Amazing. Did you get your partner to do that for you? <laughs> uh, I've noticed that I don't, I don't need to eat much and I'm full. However, boredom creeps in. Some things need to up my water too. Um, yeah, up your water a little bit. Yeah, and it's a classic thing, you know, when I say, you know, when I say to people, fundamentally, why do we eat? You know, and 
people say, oh, hunger and for fuel and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and actually, you know, we don't. We eat to change our state, to change the state we're in, whether we're bored, my mouse has died again, or whether we're, we're un unhappy, whether we're ashamed, whether we feel guilty or, or whatever, you know, we, we eat to change that state. And if you can find other ways of changing your state, then, you know, you're onto a winner. Uh, anyone know how to get a mouse to work? I'm going to have to plug it in. And I can't really change any comments until <laughs> until I do. Let me just get my, my cable and I'll plug this in for a little bit. Okay, Lisa's come back with physical touch. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. You know, um, I think that's like second in uh, in Paula's love language is physical touch. Um, but and this is the thing: it's like you know, with your with your partner, like if they've got a complete like for me and Paula, like we we are like you know, hers are um, words of I can't remember what it is, words of whatever, words of like kindness or. Or whatever, and um, and physical touch, and mine uh, is quality time, and um, but for me, I, you sort of think, well, everyone is the same. So if I've got quality time with the Paula, then surely she's happy with that. Words of affirmation, yeah. I, I thought it was that, but I, I think I weren't. I needed a bit of courage in my own conviction there, but um, but obviously that's wrong. It's wrong, wrong language for her. So you know, make sure you tell your partner and make sure they're on the. On the same, they, they understand. Right, I'm losing. Ah, I should use the trackpad. Here we go. Got to use my trackpad instead of the mouse. Lisa, same physical touch. Uh, it's sugar that's evil. Yep, certainly is. Definitely sugar that is evil. It is an evil killer that is just we have allowed to creep into society, and uh, and it is wreaking havoc. Um, what's this? Hundred mils is a lot of soy sauce. Yeah, it is. It is a lot of soy sauce. Uh, thanks, Craig. Look that up. Uh, the go to dish for me is salmon, Brussels, and green, and sounds lush. Like it. Um, Chris saying, okay, cheers. Also, been doing the 16 8 intermittent fasting, but can't get back to it since the Christmas binge. Um, I think the, the key thing is, uh, I think that's Greg, is it? But we, um, we have these things, and like I said, you know, it's like, right, 16 to 8, let's do it. Uh, but sometimes that's too big a, a, a change, you know, so try like a bloody, you know, a 12, 12 split and then a 13, 11 split and then, a, you know, and then, and then just keep working it down. And I think you'll be much, you'll, you'll get there much sooner than just trying to completely hack away at your current routine and everything you're doing and your hunger and the way that hunger's working, all this kind of stuff and, and, you know, take it from, take it from there. So. Eva's saying, yeah, pasta on trout, fill it with green beans. Everyone's mouth watering now. Chicken and new potato curry sounds good for batch cooking and uh, and freezing. Yeah, good. Uh, my love language is gifts. That's probably why you give amazing gifts. My, my save the rhino neck thing that you bought me, Claire, is immense. I use it every day. I love it. Uh, and I know Paula raves about the gifts that you got her as well. Uh, words of affirmation. Sophie's saying, I've also noticed my teeth feel cleaner throughout the day now. I'm eating less sugary foods. Yeah, it's it's immense. Um, you know, the, 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 the other sort of byproducts of of getting rid of that, you know, of that ingredient, that that sort of component of food. It's uh, it's crazy. Uh Sam's saying that doesn't surprise me, Claire. Um mine is quality time. Save as save as mine ever. So, uh, yeah. Um, and it, and it, and it, and it really is like, you know, I, I would, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's like, as long as, you know, for, for me and Paula, it's like, 
it doesn't necessarily matter what it is. It's just like, as long as we're, you know, she's not distracted doing something else and it, and it is quality time. We could be doing, you know, go for a little walk with the dog. I love our evening walk, you know, down the lane with the dogs. We both put our head torches on and get wrapped up and walk down. And there's no, you know, we just chat away about the day and what's coming up tomorrow. And we look at the stars and, you know, and it's just, I, I love that. I absolutely love it. So, um, guys, we've been going for an hour now. So, uh, we're going to start wrapping it up soon. So, just keep your questions coming through if you've got it. Yeah, it's Greg. To be fair, my working week has been thrown out this week by starting at 3 a.m. each day. Uh, that could be the reason why I'm not hitting the intermittent fasting. I don't know. I don't want to be looking for excuses, though. Yeah. So, shift work. Is, is hard when it comes to cleaning out your eating. You know, it really is. It just messes around with your the different rhythms in your your body, you know, whether it's the, the nighttime rhythm, whether it's your uh, your daytime rhythm, you know, in all these different things and, and and it makes it really, really hard, but it can it can be done, you know. It just um but maybe it's just one of those things where you don't worry so much about the intermittent fasting and just concentrate on what you're eating because if you're eating relatively well then, you know, you, you, you can still get some good results. If not, you know, maintain where you are right now. So um, hang in there, Greg. It, it will be worth it. Lisa saying thank you. You can go on. Uh, what was yours, Lisa? Gifts, was it? Or touch? Can't remember. But you can go and get some physical touch or <laughs> gifts, whichever one's yours. Uh, I have to go now to find the test. Yeah, Mika, go on. See you later on. Um, if I don't do a live stream before i'll see you next thursday uh gotta go thanks craig see you soon bye claire's off and bye and thank you from mika and uh and then thanks craig really useful good so like i said guys um i'm gonna do this every week every thursday uh i might do others in between but um other than that, you know, you can keep posting in the Facebook groups and, and, and what have you. Uh, you can reach out to me with your, you can send me your pictures of your meals and stuff like that. If you want me to critique them or give you some advice on how you can clean it up or even post it in the group. You know, there's enough people with experience in the group and that'd be really good to sort of see more meals posted in there. So stick them in there. Um, geez, all I'm... Trading at 10 with Kev. Have a good weekend, all. And you, Kev. Uh, Chris, good luck on your session tomorrow. Kathy's saying thanks, Craig. Monica's saying see you. Cheers. Eva's saying thanks, Craig. And Greg's saying cheers, Craig. Polly, by the way, and I replied. She's probably flat out, but I'm looking forward to a chat. Yeah, we'll get that sorted. She is absolutely flat out, having taken on a lot of online coaching um, clients into her group. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, check your spam as well, Greg, because a lot of uh, messages seem to go into people's spam. So if you're saying, great, thanks. Just need to catch up on the start as late to the party today. Bye, everyone. Okay, guys, so we're going to wrap it up there. Until next week, take care.